Hey there, folks. It's just me, your friendly neighborhood, Walter Shepard. Um, let me start off by saying, um, okay, I'm going to be, again, giving my opinion and my theory on when the rapture is going to be happening, or about the time the rapture is going to be happening. Again, um, the, uh, the wise ones won't set a date because the wise ones know that uh, only God knows. Um, exactly when that day and hour is going to be. Um, we're just called to uh, to keep watch, um, watch the signs um, in, in the skies, in the stars, um, uh, and, and the signs on the earth. And so we, uh, so we keep watch for that particular day. Because nobody knows. Nobody knows um, the, the, the mind of God. Anyway, um, I'm rambling again. Um... Okay, so let me start off by saying that throughout this particular rant, I'm going to be referring to the Christian body or to uh, the wise virgins or the body of Christ or um, the global church. Um, I'm going to be referring to as Christians or us or we or the believers. But when I say that, that doesn't mean that in my theory, the things I talk about, because some of it's going to be pretty scary to a lot of people. Uh, so when I say Christians are going to be going through yada, 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 that doesn't mean every single Christian is going to be experiencing that. Um, because right now we could say, and it is fair to say, that Christians right now are being beheaded. We're being beheaded. We're being persecuted. We're being burned alive. Um, we're being beaten with sticks. But not everybody in North America has, um, has experienced that. There are some people that have been um, beaten and persecuted um, for their faith. But there are more Christians overseas in third, world in third world countries that are actually being beaten with sticks, being burned, being tortured, having their heads chopped off and everything. So um, as a global body of Christ as the global church of Christ, as all, all of us that are going to be there at the wedding ceremony, it's fair to say, it's fair to be all-inclusive to say that Christians right now are being beheaded, that Christians right now are being um, persecuted and they're being uh, um, uh, burned alive. And so when I start this rant... Um, uh, some of the things that I'm going to be talking about, again, based on my own um, my own personal theories, my own opinions, and some of the dreams and visions that I've had, they're not going to be pleasant for North Americans, because uh, North Americans and most people in the modern world, um, we're all we're all pretty soft. Um, we're all we're all pretty. Um, politically correct. Uh, we don't face a lot of hardships. We don't see a lot of violence. We don't see a lot of um, horrible things that are common to everybody in, in, in say, countries like Africa or, or, or in India or, or in China. Um, some of the, uh, or, or in South America for that, for that matter. Because some of their daily lifestyles are very brutal. And those people have gotten used to, to the brutality. And there's no way Amer most North Americans could handle it. We're, we, again, we are just far too soft. Uh, when we have problems, we, 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 we run to counselors. We run to um, psychiatrists and psychologists. And, and, uh, and, 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 and we turn off the TV whenever violence comes off. And we protest violence in movies and TV shows and things like that. So compared to other Christian believers around the world and other people around the world, North Americans are pretty soft. And uh, although in North America, yes, um, things are getting a lot more violent. You see a, a lot of um, racial tension out there. You see a lot of pr police brutality. But it's very rare that the majority of North Americans actually see that. So... 
let me just say, I'm not trying to scare any of you North American Christians or any of us North American softies living in our soft countries where we treat our prisoners um, better than we treat our students. Um, our prisoners are fed three meals a day, uh, while, while many of our, our school kids, elementary school kids and junior high school and high school kids, they, they spend the day being hungry because they can't afford they can't afford food at home and things like that. So uh, so in a society where we treat our prisoners better than our own students, um, we have become pretty soft and we have become pretty um, lenient when it comes to uh, um, evil. But that's just the course of this, uh, of, of the nature of the world. Um, that's just that's just another brick on the road to the tribulation generation. Right now, the uh, the one worlders, and when I say one worlders, I'm talking about those people that are controlling the world system. Um, that being the uh, uh, the Vatican, um, the Bilderbergs, the Illuminati, the Masons, and all those people that are using all their all their all their power behind the scenes um, to control the media, um, to control higher education, to control sciences, to bring about a tribulation generation, a generation that after the rapture will basically uh, be bowing to Satan and they'll be indulging in all sorts of sins and horrible acts of violence and perversion and corruption. That's the tribulation generation that I'm speaking about and that is the generation that we wise virgins, you wise virgins, um, should be praying about and should be um, sharing the word of God to all these people, to, to, to all the lost and hurting and the distracted and the deceived, so that the Lord could open their eyes so that they can call upon him um, while the days are good and on the day that he comes back. So that after the rapture, there will be a minimum amount of human beings left. And um, during the rapture, there will be the maximum amount of human beings taken. Um, and so, that time of the rapture brings me to this particular part of the rant. And that is what I feel, um, what I've seen. Again, I, you've, you've heard me say that I don't believe the rapture is going to happen or coincide with a particular Jewish um, calendar holiday or whatever it may be and I don't believe that uh, the Planet Nine thing um, I believe there might be something out there I don't know how big it is or exactly how it's going to uh, uh, transpire again because I'm not God um, and God himself could very well use this Planet Nine thing um, in order to bring about the global chaos in order to bring about the rise of the Antichrist in order to bring about the rapture but um, the Planet Nine thing, to me, seems like something that the Lord will be using during the tribulation period and not to bring about uh, the day of the rapture. But again, that's my own personal feeling. What I feel is going to happen, and again, I've talked about it with our four steps um, to the rapture day and two steps to the rapture day. Um, I still feel we're about two steps away from the rapture. And... The main thing that I can see happening is this third world war that's coming, uh, that is supposed to be coming about. I've talked about how this one prophetess in the 90s um, foresaw the rise of Obama as a president, and she foresaw this um, faked third world war that will bring about a postponing of the election in order to keep Obama in power. And again, I will reiterate, no, I don't believe Obama is the Antichrist. He's just one of the ushers that will bring about the Antichrist. So that is what I feel is going to be happening some point in the next eight months, is that there's going to be a third world war that will bring about uh, the global chaos. Um, I believe the power is going to be shut down, um, either intentionally with an EMP device or just by the one-worlders and all their people in power saying, shut down the power in this city, shut down the power in that city, and then everything goes black. But I feel during this global chaos event, um, the internet is going to go down. And when it goes back, 
Um, when it comes back up again, um, it's going to be totally different. People are going to have to sign up, give, a, give out all sorts of personal information, and even make a public declaration of whether or not they are a Christian. And when the Internet does show up again, I believe that um, everything Christian, everything prophetic is, um, is going to be gone, and it will not be allowed. Because during the tribulation period, the Antichrist is not going to want anything biblical anything Christian or anything Christ-like to remind the people of, um, of the times before the rapture. And so the one-worlders are especially going to be taking away all, all the videos that talk about uh, the tribulation, that talk about the Antichrist, that talk about prophetic, prophetic events. So when this global event does happen, um, that comes about by this third world war, uh, the world is going to go in a time of darkness. Um, because there won't be any power. So when the power does come back up, the internet's going to be different. Communication is going to be different. And when the power does come back up, that's when we will see the, the rise, or that's when I believe we will see the rise of the Antichrist. And he will be the one that brings um, peace to the Middle East, and thereby bringing worldwide peace. And he will have all the answers to the... Um, the economic struggles that are going throughout the world with all these various countries and the people of the world are going to see him as being the great man with all the answers. Um, he will be a, a, a brilliant military strategist um, and that will add to his um, that will add to his public image. Uh, and it will it will be around that time when um, People are saying peace and and safety. That's when he is, or that's when I believe he is going to start sneaking in the separation of the Christians from the rest of the world, so that Christians are going to be experiencing um, military police coming to their door. Uh, I believe Christians are going to be experiencing the time of separation. Uh, the time when they're going to have to make a choice between choosing the flesh or choosing the Father, choosing the ways of the world or, or choosing to um, proclaim their, their love of Jesus, um, proclaiming him as, as Lord of their lives. And again, um, I will reiterate that time of separation where the military police have their guns pointed at a Christian and saying, deny Jesus or die, um, that could very well happen in North America. But I believe most of that is going to happen overseas. It's going to happen in Europe and Africa and China and all those other places where Christians are and where the one-worlders will begin their time of separation. So we in North America could very well see some of that. So I believe that Christians will see... Um, guns pointed at them, and they will have to make a choice of whether to um, deny Jesus or proclaim him as their Lord. Um, but like I, like I had mentioned earlier, um, I'm talking about the global body of Christ, and that um, North Americans may see the beginning of that, the beginning of the separation. But in terms of the military police breaking into houses and uh, pointing guns at Christians and uh, getting them to deny him or not, I believe the majority of that is going to be happening um, overseas in, in, in Europe and in Africa um, and all, all the Asiatic countries. Because those people over there, they've, they've had their civilizations around for thousands and thousands of years. Here in North America, we've only had our civilization around for hundreds and hundreds of years. So we're still pretty soft in terms of the amount of human brutality that uh, our bloodlines on this continent have seen. Whereas over in Europe, they've, they've been living with brutality for thousands of years, as, as, as has the people um, of all the Asiatic countries. They've seen brutality all, all just about every day for thousands of years, as well as the people in Africa. And so I believe the Christians over there will see the brutality that comes from the one-worlders um, when they begin the time of separation, when they start taking... Um, oh, and this is another thing, if I can digress for a second. 
is that when Christians see the military police pointing their guns at them, the strongest of Christians are going to be shot dead right there, right in their whole in, in their own household, um, right there in their own front yards, right there in on, on their own streets. Um, and that is because the one-worlders do not want the strongest Christians inside um, the internment camps because they could start a revival there. They want uh, the, the, the questionable Christians, the mediocre Christians um, inside there because then those Christians could have uh, the opportunity of um, either being beheaded or or denying the Lord. So there will be another time of separations or another test of separations for Christians once they get into the camps. <sighs> but for now, um, here in North America, and I still, I, I can't, I can't fight that feeling. I have to be brutally honest. I believe here in North America, yes, we are going to see the military police um, breaking into our households and pointing guns at us and asking us to deny Jesus or to uh, accept the accept the ways of the world. How far that gets, I have no idea. Um, I believe, personally, and this is just based on my own personal interpretation of the dreams and visions that I've had, and based on the dreams and visions that other people that have, have had on YouTube that I've watched, and that... Um, the rapture will happen after the Third World War, after the Antichrist has arisen, and during the time of the separation. The Antichrist and the one-worlders are going to say, okay, it's time to start the separation of the people. So I believe that a small minority of North Americans are going to experience um, the military police breaking into their house and um, pointing guns at them. And the strongest of Christians, the strongest of those Christians whose houses are broken into, they are going to be killed right there. Because, as I said, the one-worlders don't want strong Christians inside the internment camps. Because, again, like I said, they could start a revival. So it will be at that beginning, be it the first few days of, uh, of the military police breaking into our houses, um, it will be during that time that the rapture will happen. And it could be that this particular separation of uh, Christians from the worldly people, that could be the ultimate test that Jesus has for all you wise virgins out there. Because um, many of you wise virgins um, admit it, um, I've, I've heard you commenting on it before and talking about it, is that we all want the rapture to happen before the Antichrist um, uh, steps up on the scenes. We all want the rapture to happen before the tribulation period starts. And, and that would be a good thing. And that would be a great thing. But I believe that we're going to be tested. Uh, that, that all Christians in North America and throughout the world are going to be tested. They're going to have their faith tested. And that testing will be whether or not we're going to um, have a gun pushed in our face and... Um, whether or not we really do love the Lord, because that will be the ultimate test. When you're staring f uh, death straight in the face, that will be the test of how strong a Christian you really are. Are you really ready to die for your Lord? Are you really ready to give up your life for Jesus? Are you really ready to die for your fellow servants out there? That will be the ultimate test. And many of you Christians right now um, watching this, um, you're, you're afraid of that. You don't want to be tested. And, and that should tell you something about your relationship with the Lord. Because as the Bible says, we need to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Because we know that um, even Christians have to go through a time of judgment um, before we get assigned our positions of authority. Um, in heaven, after uh, after the wedding ceremony, 
um, or even before the wedding ceremony. Anyway, at some time in heaven, after the rapture, we're going to be um, standing before Jesus um, at the judgment seat to give an account of our lives um, as Christians, of what we did and did not do for the sake of Jesus, for the for the sake of um, spreading the gospel, of spreading the uh, of of our great commission, because we're supposed to be out there in the world. Um, making more Christians, making more disciples, um, sharing the gospel, sharing God's word with people, being in, being encouragement, being a good, a good, good example. And um, so when we come before Jesus' judgment seat, uh, that's going to decide our position of authority during the thousand years of peace is exactly how much we did for our Lord and Savior, for our Lord, for our commander, for Jesus, how much we did for the sake of the gospel. How much glory are we bringing to, to our Heavenly Father by being a Christian down here? And the greatest test of any Christian would be whether or not they are willing to give up their life, whether they're, whether they're, they're willing to lay down their lives for Jesus when they have a gun stuck in their face. Are they going to give up Jesus because they want to live, because they're afraid to die? Um, if you're a Christian and you're afraid to die, that means you're not sure where you're going to be going when you do die. And if you're not sure where you're going to be going when you die, that means you lack the faith or your relationship with Jesus himself on a personal level is not very deep. So if you're a Christian and you're afraid to die, uh, you got to get right with the Lord. You got to start reading um, your Bible a whole lot more. Um, you got to be praying a whole lot more, both 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 conversationally and and formally in, in deep prayer, um, prostrate prayer. You got to humble yourself. If you're a Christian and you're and you're afraid to die, um, then then you're not right with the Father, because you should know. All Christians should know that to be absent from the body means to be present with the Lord. So as soon as they pull that trigger, you know that you're going to be in heaven with your Heavenly Father. So that could be the test, the, or, or the final test, to, uh, to, to weed out the lazy and weak servants from those who are strong in the Lord, those who have a, a good, strong relationship with the Lord, is they have to face death. And like I said, um, speaking as a global body of believers, that doesn't mean every single Christian is going to go through that. Um, as I had mentioned, um, when the separation starts in North America, um, it could be going on for a number of hours. It could be going on for a number of days, weeks, or months. And then the rapture will happen. So I believe the rapture is going to happen um, after the Antichrist has declared world peace and when he starts the separation of the people. So um, we have no idea how long this uh, third world war is going to take place or we have no idea how, how long this uh, global chaos is going to affect the planet. We have no idea exactly how long um, the total blackout that people will be in. We have no we have idea we have no idea how long um, it's going to take to bring peace to the Middle East and peace to the world, and we have no idea how long it's going to be for them to uh, de to to get the world economy um, straightened out. We have no idea how long it's going to take for um, the false prophet to bring about a global one world religion. But it'll be around that time that the rapture will happen. So. Any time between when this Third World War starts and the time of separation um, begins, the rapture could happen at any time between there. And so I believe that the Third World War is going to start sometime in the next eight months, it, um, according to that prophet or the prophetess that I'm holding on to, uh, I'm holding on to her vision, um, is that the Third World War will postpone the election. And out of that third world war will come the global chaos, which will come um, the rise of the Antichrist, which will bring about world peace, which will then bring about the time of separation. So um, again, that hold from, from the time of the world war starting to the time of the separation, that could be months. That could be months in there. It could be years in there. We have no idea. Um, it could also be weeks and it could also be days. So again, um, I'm just uh, laying out my own personal opinion on how I see events 
unfolding before the rapture happens. And again, because I'm not God, um, he could he could have the rapture happen before all that starts. He could have the rapture happen um, tonight at the at, at, at the very at, at the very moment you're watching this. God has it all worked out, so we don't have to worry about anything. We don't have to worry about anything at all. Um, if we're right with the Lord, if we have a good relationship with Jesus Christ, if we're listening and talking to the Holy Spirit all the time, if if we are friends of God, then we have absolutely nothing to fear. Even if the military police break into your house right now and they point a gun at your face, you have nothing to fear. It'll be a scary experience for sure because it'll be something out of the ordinary. But at the same time, you won't have anything to fear because the worst that they can do to you is kill you. The worst that they can do to you is torture you. And if they torture you, they're just sending up more treasures in heaven for you to, uh, to for for you that will be waiting for you. Um, for any trials and persecutions that we all have to go through, they just make our time in heaven that much better. And so we don't have anything to fear especially when this third world war starts up or, or or when world peace is declared or when we actually see the Antichrist with our own eyes on TV or on our little thumb typing communication devices. I believe the the body of Christ will see the rise of the Antichrist before the rapture, as as that um, verse in, in 2 Thessalonians says. It says, concerning the day of the Lord, that will not um, happen until the man of lawlessness is revealed. So, um, um, again, it just comes down to the rapture will not happen until after we see um, the Antichrist. And the Antichrist won't come about until this Third World War brings about global chaos. And again, we don't have anything to be afraid of. We, we have no reason to be afraid to die. We have no reason to be afraid of being pulled out of our houses and thrown onto a bus and thrown into a camp because we know at some point during that time, that's when the rapture is going to happen. And so we don't have anything to fear. Jesus is with us all the time. He's, he's, he's empowering us. Um, any persecution that, that, that we go through is, 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 is going to benefit us um, in eternity. And so we, we just have to be patient and, and, and wait for the day of the Lord to happen. Uh, but in between now and then, we still have that great commission um, to fulfill. We still have to be good examples of, of, of what it's like to be a Christian in this fallen world, in this world of so many trials and so many tribulations and so many hardships that we have to go through. We can still be shining examples. We're called to be salt and light to the world. We're, we're, we're called to be good examples of, of, um, of a servant of, of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, so I think that's it. Um, I'm going to calm down now. I started to get a little, a little hyper there with my uh, particular rant. And we can still have fun, too, even even with the days um, growing darker. I still see a lot of um, pharisaical Christians out there, and I see a lot, still see a lot of legalistic Christians out there um, pushing their legalism. And, and uh, whenever I see a Christian um, use the words, you are wrong, then I know they are legalists or they are Pharisees because they are holding to their word. They're holding on to their God box. And they're, they're saying, oh, God only does things this way and God only does things that way. Um, so don't let them discourage you. Um, if, 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 if you're sharing your, your testimony or you're sharing your theory or, or, or whatever or your opinion and some, some legalistic Pharisee Christian comes up and says, no, you're wrong. This is the way it is. It, well, just, just, uh, just, just be nice to them and just be understanding. Just, uh, just, just let them know, okay, well, this, is, this comes to the point where we have to agree to disagree. So, again, we're not battling flesh, um, and it's sad when Christians battle each other because um, that just shows division, and we're not supposed to be divided, and we're not supposed to be um, warring with each other. We're not supposed to be warring with other people either. We're not battling. It's, it's not a battle against atheists or agnostics or 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 anybody that appears to be um, an, an anti-Christian, Bible basher, church crasher. We're not, it's, it's not a battle of flesh and blood, as you know, because those people who come against Jesus, who come against you, they have been influenced by darker spirits. They've been, they've been influenced um, by the demons and the fallen angels out there. So we have to pray against um, 
those darker spirits that are influencing those people. Um, and we pray for those people because all those people, they're still children of God. They're still human beings in need of salvation. So we're not speaking out against them. We're not arguing against them. Um, we're trying to open their eyes. And we're trying to reveal the truth of, um, of the salvation through Jesus. Uh, and so... Um, and so even though um, some of these Christians seem really, really dark and negative, um, we can still have fun. Um, we can still enjoy ourselves. There are still, there, there are still plenty of, day, of, of, of good days left where, 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 where we can just simply have joy in the Lord. Um, uh, for, for those of you that are on my Facebook page, um, you can see the, 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 uh, the, the, the things that I post, I, I post about five different groupings of things, and they're all things that speak to the non-believers as well as to the Christians. I I, I have a lot of um, Bible-based postings, um, Christian postings, um, and then there are just basic comedy videos or 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 or, or, or silly memes or, um, or 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 health tips or cooking recipes or just stuff that I find fascinating. Um, again, you know, I I, I could spend my days being being a doom and gloom kind of preacher oh tribulations coming oh the oh the there's so much pain and suffering in the world and there is and the lord knows that i take that seriously and the lord knows that i'm praying for my fellow servants out there who are suffering who are who are undergoing um extreme tribulation right now who are being persecuted the lord knows that i have a heart for them and the lord knows that i weep for them and and, and the lord lord knows that i love them and, and and that i'm praying the best for them but he also knows that focusing on any one thing can really be a downer for a lot of people if you're always focusing on the negative things then you're going to be bringing out negativity in your life but um if if, if you have a well-balanced relationship with the lord uh, you can still enjoy the things of the world without being consumed by them, without making them an idol, without putting them before the Lord. We can still have fun with the things of the world without being immersed in them, without being, um, without being controlled by them. Um, Christians are allowed to ride roller coasters. Christians are allowed to go into fun houses. Christians are allowed to watch comedy TV shows and stuff like that. Again, a strong Christian will be able to look at anything in the world and they say, "Okay, that's worldly. That's of the of of the devil." But I can I can still enjoy um, I can still enjoy some of the things that 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 the world has. Although I have to admit, um, the world, uh, the TV shows and the movies, they're becoming much more darker and 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 the fun stuff the real fun stuff um that that the world used to produce um it's not so fun anymore it's 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 probably about 30 percent fun and 70 percent um influenced um by 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 satanic um thoughts and themes and so i don't encourage people to go out there and 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 um immerse themselves in the world but if you're one of those christians that are already doing it um, just be wise um, in, in, in the stuff that you enjoy and use that as fuel for prayer. Um, whenever I do watch TV, um, the Lord knows that um, whenever I see something that doesn't seem right, I, my mind automatically goes into prayer for that people, for that group of people. Or, or, or when I step into a movie theater, um, as, as the lights go down, the first thing that I do is, is pray. I just pray over the audience. I plead the blood of Jesus over them. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will uh, keep their minds strong and that they will not be influenced by, that, by, by, any, by anything that the enemy would try to influence them with. So we can still be in the world um, and enjoy some of the things of the world without being influenced by them and we can use that as fuel to pray for for the non-believers that are out there um, we, we can pray that they won't be influenced by, by by the stuff of the world that they won't be distracted um, we can pray that the lord will even use those bad things to bring about good um, because even through a, a a godless tv show the holy spirit can spill still speak to those non-believers and and the holy spirit can still reveal truth to them the truth about about our heavenly father the the the, the truth about salvation through jesus 
So it doesn't matter what the world produces, um, God can still turn it around and use it for good. So basically what I'm saying is um, enjoy yourself in the world. Enjoy yourself while the days are still good. Because once this Third World War um, happens and once things start start. Um, start shutting down, the power starts to shine, that's when things are going to get dark. And that's when you um, will be a blessing to the people around you um, because you will have built up your relationship with the Lord. You will have built up your knowledge of the Bible. You will have, have built up um, the, the power of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit within you so that when the days are dark, you can still be a shining light. You can still um, have joy. You can still lead all the people around you, um, whether they're your, your family members or your friends or just your neighbors out there, um, because there's a lot of people that are going to be very, very scared. And um, the Lord wants you to be a light to them. He, he, he wants you to show that there, that there is joy, um, to, show, to, to show that these events that are happening to the world have all been planned. And, and God has a plan for all the people out there. And the darkness that is going to come upon the world is just part of his plan. And part of his plan is to let evil have its way for a very short time so that Jesus can come back and start the world all over again so that even though times are dark, they can give their life to the Lord so that if they should die during those dark days, they can go to heaven. They can have, have, have salvation. They can have eternal life. So um, while the days are good, enjoy yourself, but uh, build up your relationship to the Lord. Um, spend time in the Word. Read as much of the Bible as you can between now and then. And share the gospel. Share the love of Jesus with your family and friends and your neighbors, your co-workers and your, and your fellow students or wherever you are. So um, just, just be a blessing because eventually, um, whenever it happens, um, it's going to happen. Um, these good days are going to be turning into the dark days. But the dark days um, for you wise virgins will be short-lived because once the dark days happen, then you can expect um, the rapture to happen at any moment after that. Um, and again, we can expect the, uh, or, or we, or we can know that the rapture could happen even before then. Again, it's not up to us. And again, this is just my opinion stating, um, the events I believe that are going to happen that will lead up to the time of the rapture. Could be a great testing, um, for Christians or, um, no, because, because the Bible simply says that, um, it's, it, it, it hasn't been appointed to, to, to the wise virgins to go through wrath and that and that the Lord is going to spare us from that time of great testing that is going to come upon the world. So we will see the rise of the Antichrist, but we won't go through the great time of testing. We won't go through the days of wrath, but we will see the rise of the Antichrist. But where he rises in terms of the global event, we have yet to see. But as a global body, yes, some of us are going to go through that persecution, um, and again, I believe it'll be most of the people overseas in those uh, in those older nations. Um, but yes, the church body will see the rise of the Antichrist. The church body will see the time of separation. The church body will see um, some persecution. But I believe North America is going to be spared a lot of that. But we will, in North America, see the rise of the Antichrist. Um, and then the rapture will happen, as it says in Second Thessalonians. Okay, um, that's it. Um, I think that's about it for now. I think my rambling's done. I'm just, I'm just repeating myself again, over and over again. Or actually, I'm just reiterating things. I'm hoping to drive home the point that uh, we need to be building up our relationship with the Lord, um, because if we or when we experience those days of darkness, um, it'll help us. We will be the light, and 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 we will be that source of encouragement that are that are. Um, that the non-believers around us will need. They will need somebody to, uh, to, to, to be the light and to show the way for salvation. So, and that's you, wise virgins. So um, I guess that's it. I will end off with my usual, my usual rhyming spiel. So uh, um, take care, stay in prayer, um, read your Bible. We'll see you in Jesus' kingdom somewhere over there, or we'll see, see you up in the air. All righty. Um, meet you at the East Gate meetup. All right? Okay. Take care. Uh, remember, Jesus rules. Oh.